So, okay. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and get started here. And to the best of my knowledge, uh, this is being recorded and we will post this up on YouTube. Uh, but it also, to be clear, only the first 30 minutes. Uh, the second part, the second 30 minutes is actually going to be over on a Teams meeting. And Patty will be posting the uh, link for that Teams meeting in the comments. Uh, and uh, that will not be because this is not a Q&A thing. This is actually, I want interaction. I want people to, to talk good and bad. And I just don't feel comfortable recording that and posting that. So this is what we're going to do. Anywho. This is one of those where uh, I, I drag Kevin into this because I don't know. Kicking what. and screaming. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or as we call it, just another day. Another day. Um, but it's one of those we wanted to talk about this stuff from a, from a couple of uh, perspectives. And one of those perspectives we wanted to be talking about was uh, being useful. So welcome. Uh, this is going to be calculating the cost of downtime, and this is uh, another one of the webinars that we're trying to do a series on that really talks about IT issues, and we're trying to thread the needle between what is useful for uh, internal IT support people as well as CEOs who want to know more about their organization from a technology perspective don't necessarily want to become geeks, but they want to be informed enough. And we're trying to thread the needle on this. And boy, I would love to get feedback from people on both sides of the fence uh, as far as how well we're hitting the mark, because it's quite honestly, it's, it's a little bit challenging. So, and what are we going to talk about? We're really going to talk about why does downtime matter? And we're also going to talk about a definition of risk. And you may recall about four or five months ago, uh, I did another webinar that was talking about risk definition. And I'll have a link in uh, to that webinar where we talk about that. And then really what it gets down to is a couple of simple ways to define the cost of downtime. What does it cost an organization? And then what do you do with this value? Because one of the things is, is part of our responsibility whether again, whether the CEO or the internal IT or as a managed service provider working with either or both of these parties is we want to make sure that we're mitigating risk, that we're doing things properly. Um, and it's hard to do if you don't know what the cost is of bad things happening. You know, it, it, and that's something that IT people don't necessarily know the answers to those, but they can lead the discussions. And yes, Kevin is a good sport. He's very useful, whatever. Yeah, a lot of the stuff here is not technical. Like you don't want your most technical person going over all of the bits and pieces of, uh, you know, how does this backup work? When should we do this? These are business questions. This is, this is stuff, like Bob said, this is for business owner to answer, or at least the people who drive the numbers. Yeah, and to do a shameless plug for, for my first book, that's one of the big reasons I wrote a survival's guide to uh, a CEO survival's guide to information technology was because CEOs need to be involved with this stuff more so than many of them are. And also IT people, we have to both let them and encourage them to 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 be that involved. And we'll we'll talk to that as we go through this. So is this for you? First of all, if you're going to be implementing a BCDR, Business Continuity Disaster Recovery Strategy, uh, absolutely, or you're just budgeting that strategy. And we'll talk about what a Business Continuity Disaster Recovery Strategy is. And also, if you're impacted by downtime. Huh. I suspect that is for some people are impacted by downtime. That's my guess. And you notice that if you've seen some of our webinars, we have some of the same slides because we really want to get to the, what, is, what are we talking about here? What if you had some standard measures for costs and risks? And by standard, I mean throughout your organization. So you could have the conversation on the topic and be in sync as to what it is you're talking about because then you can have the real conversations about risk without making it up and without uh, having to invent it on the fly. So you have three meetings on the topic and every time, every one of those meetings, you invent a different figure or you look at a different perspective. 
that doesn't help. And Stephanie, thanks for the feedback about the default, the sound on uh, mute by default. That's probably because nobody wants to hear me by default. <laughs> I mean, simple things like you just don't get like someone who maybe is working out on a shop floor, they work in 15 minute increments. Management does everything in hour increments. Well, you have to come to agreement of who's going to use what unit of time. And it's as little things like that you normally don't expect. Um, or what do you call your unit of time? What do you call your unit of work? Uh, these are all things that you have to come up with a very standardized definition. Otherwise, none of this stuff makes sense when you try and present it and then represent it to someone else. Right. And the nice thing is, is that then following up on that, Kevin, is, is when you have follow-up conversations, you can say, remember, our downtime is X. And then have the rest of the conversation being more productive. So, cool. So, who are these guys? Kevin, you want to introduce oh, your I must have just shaved my head in that picture because it's, it's definitely gotten much longer there. Any comment on that, dude. <laughs> a lot more gray. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm the tech director. I think next month is actually 11 years at Simplex. Yeah, something <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's been way too long. I don't know what the heck I'm doing here. Um, Geek extraordinaire, that's probably putting it lightly. I think the amount of servers and networking equipment I have here at my house is uh, exceeds most of our small business clients. Um, I treat this as my lab, quite honestly. Uh, a lot of demo work here, a lot of uh, prep work and just design playing with uh, education. Cool. And uh, I'm the CEO, Crotchy Old Geek, all that kind of fun stuff. And, and one of the things that we do, and I think we do relatively well, is we bridge that chasm that often exists between the uh, the question about what is the productivity of IT, what is the value that IT brings to the organization in terms of, yeah, and a pop off aficionado. Oh, don't oh, get them started, Ann. But what, how, do, how does IT bring actual value not only to the organization, but also to that organization's clients and uh, customers? And how do we do that without getting too deep into the geek weeds? Uh, and make sure that there's there's a some real good synergy between IT and business. So we'll talk a little bit about that. I don't want to get too caught up into that stuff. So why do we do this? These are our values. Uh, as you say, doing the right thing. Uh, learn first, share first. And, and, it, and it basically is one of those, that's why we don't do sales webinars. That's why we do these kind of webinars, because we want to first demonstrate our willingness to share information, insights, all of that kind of fun stuff. And uh, that's that's really core at the heart of our of, of our mission. So that is something we have done for years, even uh, if you if you've been with us for a number of years, uh, when we used to do our lunch in ours back at uh, the, uh, the one Hattie Warm little yeah. coffee place. Uh, we would always have our NASCAR slide, and hey, look, guys, we do all that stuff. Moving on, that's it. We're we're just here to share the information with you. Um, I mean, if you want to engage with us, cool. Uh, we'll always love that. Um, but no, that that's not what we're about. Right. And for those of you who are doing internal IT, and we'll talk about this a little bit towards the end. Uh, we love to do what we call commits or co-managed IT services, and we literally. Uh, <laughs> We wrote the books. We've written the only books on this topic uh, in the industry. So we work with internal IT organizations. That's roughly about half of our clients are on that level now. So love to talk to you about that. Okay, now can we get to the freaking topic? Cost of downtime. Well, we always have caveats. And we're talking, this is relatively simple definitions so that we can walk away instead of being confused and totally burned out. We can walk away and go, yeah, I can use this. I can work with this. So it's for small, medium organizations. We're also talking about a, a business conversation, not a tech one. So we're not going to be talking about remediation. We're also not going to talk about prevention. We will talk a little bit when we define risk. We're really talking about how to put a value, a cost to that downtime so that you're more empowered to make the appropriate calculations. You know, if there's nothing to steal, why spend a huge amount of money on the security system? Okay. 
Hi, Jason. <laughs> I was going to say, apparently, Jason just just saw Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And apparently, I got the animations mixed up on this one. So what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about risk. We're going to talk about uh, the two big numbers in downtime cost calculations. And we're going to talk about actually two or three simplified approaches to calculating downtime costs. One's going to be a website. And the other two is actually going to be an Excel worksheet that we've created that we can share with you. OK, first of all, what is risk? And this is directly stolen from a uh, webinar that we did uh, back in, I think it was September, where we talked about risk management and risk acceptance. And I've got a link to the to the recording uh, in the presentation there. So I think it would be a good companion piece for this. But here's the bottom line. is it's a, it's a measurement of impact and probability. You know, the possibility of something bad happening and what would the impact be? All right. So we really want to talk now about impact because that's a business question. Probability, when we're talking on the IT side, can be more of a technical, although as we'll talk about it, it isn't always. You know, but the bottom line is without some definition of what, what the risk is for a particular situation or a particular vulnerability, single points of failure, all of that kind of fun stuff, it's really hard to judge how much of a strategy you should implement in, in the prevention of risk or in the quick recovery of risk. So fairly straightforward, fairly simple. Again, I want to stress we're talking today about impact. Okay. And then we're going to talk real quickly about downtime. And I want to be clear, I don't care what the source of downtime is for this conversation. You know, what the, what the reason is, what happened to it, all that. Uh, but we could be talking about equipment failure. We could be talking about cybersecurity failure, whether that be a ransomware or a hacking or, you know, data loss, whatever. Application failure, personnel issues. And the personnel issue is somebody could have entered data in incorrectly, which, you know, validate or, or invalidated your data set so you have to go back uh, it could be that you had this is this is a key one it could be that there's a person or persons who have specific knowledge of how to do something and they are not available either short term or long term a lot of organizations had to deal with that suddenly with uh, covid uh, how do you deal with that when suddenly that store of knowledge is not accessible short term or long term um, so there's all sorts of reasons why you cannot perform business process at a particular time. Okay. And I want to talk real quickly about business continuity and disaster recovery. Here's the thing. When I first started in IT, and I was an IT director at a municipality in Ohio, and we're talking almost freaking 40 years oh my god <laughs> about 35 years ago or so it was all disaster recovery and disaster and and then about 15 years ago or so they started using the word business continuity usually i hate this because it's usually a term that just changes what uh what 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 the uh, consultants can charge you know it sounds fancier so we're going to charge money this one actually has some teeth in it Disaster recovery was essentially a recognition that an organization or critical components of an organization were down. Down, and they were going to be down for a period of time. Customers would notice. Clients would notice. Vendors would notice. The public would notice. You couldn't hide it. And therefore, it was a question of how do we get back up and running as quickly and as effectively as possible and communicate to the rest of the world as effectively and efficiently to minimize the damage. But we're down. Business continuity is a different beast. That is essentially, the key word is continuity. What can we do to make sure that we're able to, it may be limping, it may be dragging our carcass, but we're able to continue on some level while we're fixing whatever the problem is. At this point, for the most part, and we'll talk a little bit about it, most organizations should have business continuity solutions because they do not cost that much more, if at all, 
versus a disaster recovery solution. Now, there are some things where, no, it will be a disaster. Kevin, you're talking about a, a data center? OVH. Yeah, if uh, any of you have seen any of the uh, news recently about uh, OVH data center, uh, the thing burned down. I mean, it, it's gone. It was 100% loss at that uh, facility. And there's a lot of people who thought their stuff being in a data center was safe. They did not have any kind of... Uh, business continuity plan and certainly no disaster recovery plan. Uh, there's a game a friend of mine plays, uh, it, it's gone. Like literally everything about that game is just gone. There's no records of it. Uh, there, there, there's nothing. They're starting over looking for a new host. That's, that's their plan right now because there's nothing. Yeah, your data is no longer in the, in the cloud. It's now in the fire. Thank you for that. It, but, but that actually brings up a good point. There's a lot of organizations who have placed their confidence uh, into cloud solution providers. And a lot of cloud solution providers, and all cloud is, is really servers that are placed by a third party that still give you access to them in some way. It's a superset or subset, blah, blah, blah. But often they put all their eggs in one basket and that one basket can be whoever that cloud host is. And in this case, this was a data site that hosted, it, it's in France, I guess, uh, and essentially other third parties were using them and basically going, okay, we're fine, we're hosted. But, uh, yeah. but <laughs> actually the, the, the challenge becomes one of, you have a single point of failure. Now it's a huge, you know, uh, a huge issue would have to happen. Like, I don't know, a, a fire maybe, uh, where that entire site would go down. But if it did, you have no recoverability. So that would truly be a disaster recovery, as opposed to putting all your data at that one site. Okay, so this is gonna get pun city here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so you could put all of your data in one site, but then you should also make sure that there is at least some other copy someplace else. Depending upon how accessible, how accessible it is, that could be a difference between a disaster recovery plan we have to download it. We got to go find more servers. We got to do whatever. So we're going to be down for a while and a business continuity plan where you actually can, can still operate to some level while remediation actions are being done. My, my, my general way to keep this stuff straight, business continuity, I'm trying to look forward. Disaster recovery, I'm looking back. I mean, that it's really what it boils down to. You want to plan for the future or do you want to just pick up the mess? And both are fine. If you, it, it, as we go through this, if you guys uh, run through these calculations and it's like, oh, four days of downtime is gonna cost me, what's in my pocket, 20 bucks? I don't care. That's okay. You've at least gone through it and realized the fact that, oh, yeah, you, it, that's not gonna cost me much. So I don't care. I don't need to spend that much money on a business continuity plan because I have a, a very high acceptable uh, downtime. And, and to, to the points that are being made, yes, make the host laugh on camera. Fine. This is really tough. Yeah. But no, seriously, though, you had, you had something recently that, that has just happened over the, last, over the last week. There was a recent vulnerability that was identified on on-premise exchange boxes. These are servers that host an organization's email where significant vulnerabilities were discovered. Uh, with the exchange box. So absolutely, everybody was talking about you should be on Office 365 because Office 365, absolutely safe, absolutely secure there. Yesterday, there was about an hour or so outage of Office 365. So if, if you simply look at any single solution, any single vendor, any single layer as being that's the, the, that's the protection, that's the continuity, that's the strategy, end all, be all, there are circumstances and scenarios that can happen and given time enough will happen that will cause you to regret that if you over promise it or over rely on it. Cool. All righty. So the couple of calculations I always talk about here, really there's two numbers. And, and the number, the first number is how much data is completely lost. And really that can be measured from there. And, and we're talking about IT failures here at, at, for this. And Jason, yeah, I, oh boy, we'll get to that in a second. Oh yeah. So 
you're backing data up and we're not going to get too much into the details. So every time you make a, a, a backup of the data and we're going to assume that data is safe, although we just talked about challenges on that, the clock starts ticking because if something happens to the server until the next backup occurs, then we're going to lose that data in that, in that amount from the system and we'll have to recover that in some way. So how much data is lost because between the time of the disaster and the time of the last successful backup. Okay, data recovery time. And then the second is, how long does it take for us to get back online? Okay, and those are the two numbers that are the simplest to have discussions about. Other issues, absolutely, we get into what happens if uh, Susan is the only person who knows how to run the invoice process or to put out the shipping notices or whatever. What happens if she's out of town unexpectedly or, or worse yet, leaves the organization? Or there's this only, we only have one desktop that's configured in order to do the print these particular reports or that kind of thing as well. But for right now, we're going to talk, we're going to focus mostly on these two. Yeah, and Jason, you're absolutely right. And of course, Anne is as well. When you start talking about migration, when you start talking about you, you, you need to make sure that's, that the, the packages are wrapped and the ribbons are tied and all of that kind of fun stuff. Because every time you leave pieces in place and you're not aware of them, those pieces represent vulnerabilities. So whether that vulnerability is because you you had the, the firewall is configured so it let this stuff still be out there or it left this ab ability for people to, to connect to it or the like or it was never patched. So you got to keep your eyes and ears on that stuff. So let's actually start taking a look at a couple of things. First of all, we're going to take a look at, and, and I have to, we're, we are a big data partner. We're a data platinum, whatever that means. Uh, I think it just means we send them a lot of money. Uh, no, we're, we are a big data partner uh, and all of that. They, they were one of the first companies. There are other organizations. Uh, and if you essentially just go to, um, I think that's it. No, if you, you just do a search for downtime calculators, I think you'll find that. Yeah, let's see where did I put it. I can remember years ago, data was definitely one of the first ones who would really drive this whole concept of a, uh, uh, a ca the downtime calculator uh, for uh, sales and yeah, you know, let people know that, hey, this is the thing you really need to calculate. And then over time, the rest of the industry is like, hey, that's a really good idea. I should do that. And yeah, they're all over now. Yeah. And, and there are different perspectives on this stuff. So deal with it as you will. But this is fairly straightforward. And it just asks some questions. A couple of them are on the geeky side, uh, but most of them are not. We're going to show you a couple other ways to do the same type of calculations. So we start with how long can your business survive without access to your IT systems? Okay. And some of that, when you think about it, that's, that's subjective. Uh, but it's important to have some kind of an idea what happens if you have downtime and, and you can be, you can divide it into parts of your organization. It really, how, how accurate do you want to be and how detailed do you want to be? And then how much data or how many hours of work are you willing to lose and repeat? That gets back to that. How frequently are you doing the backups? I say the, uh, the, for an example of the first one there with uh, how long can you be without your systems? We have worked with some clients who have commitments to big distributors like, you know, Home Depot or Walmart or something like that. They are heavily fined and penalized um, if they cannot get their orders turned around the same day that you actually, that a client or you know, one of their customers puts through. Um, so quite literally, if you are down for more than 24 hours, a lot of times you could just kiss that contract with Walmart or whatever other big distribution center gone. And if that was your whole business, okay, good luck. The good thing about that, this makes that calculation really easy. You know, that there's your cost definitions. And then you have some other questions about where do you currently store? How often you buy? Some of this gets on the technical side, but then we get into the, the, the real traditional stuff. And that is, how many employees do you have? 
what's their annual salary and what's the annual uh, overhead cost of the employee and what's your, av what's your average revenue. And essentially it is a question because now we're talking about, and there's two ways of looking at this. You can look at it either from a standpoint of employees that are not productive are costing me money. So I've got money coming out of my bank account to pay for employees that are doing nothing. Okay, great. What's the cost of the employee per hour and, and how many of them do I have? I now have my hourly downtime. The second is to look at it from a revenue standpoint. If you're producing X amount of dollars of product, and by product it can be service, it can be product, it can be whatever, per year, then roughly, and, and it goes in cycles depending upon how you what your product is and how you do it, but roughly take that annual revenue, divide it by the number of hours, you've got your revenue per number of hours. So you could look at it from a cost standpoint, you could look at it from a revenue standpoint, but either one of those will give you very, very simple calculation to get roughly what the cost is. And then what this will do is this will basically give you some information about what your vulnerability is and all of that kind of fun stuff. So that's what the RTO does. We did something a little different. We created a worksheet that we will share with you. And all this does is this allows you to actually specify which section of your company. What would happen if email went down? What would happen if your ERP system? What would happen if the entire system lost, everybody lost internet? What if there's only one location? You need to use a little imagination, but all you do is you specify which vulnerability you have, identify the scope, and these are completely up to you. And then we start with the data recovery. How many hours of data would you lose? Meaning that we lost two hours of data, we have to recover that data. Meaning not only do we have to re-enter it, but in some cases we need to figure out what it was in the first place. Because in a lot of cases, there is no paper trail. So how do you recalculate? If your clients are entering orders online and they've entered an order successfully and then your system tanks, and you no longer have that order, what kind of record do you have that can allow you to rebuild it or recover it? And then what's the recovery cost? Approximately per hour. And, and this is subjective here. So there's no way for us to tell it. And then how many hours did you lose? Pretty straightforward calculation. So then the other thing here though, this is where we get into wages. So we talk about the employees, what's their salary, what's their overhead. And then that calculates to, here's the dollar per hour per employee. Therefore, here's the dollar per hour. Okay, so very simple. If you basically can say, well, for the ERP, it only affects these 20 people. Oh, okay, well, put in 20. Then all their numbers are the same. And then we've got, and I'll get into adjusted in a second, the exact same thing, but reverse from a revenue standpoint. From a revenue standpoint, you can essentially say, here's our annual income, or for the people using the ERP system, here's the annual income, or for this whatever. And all we do for hours is we basically say 250 days in a year, five days a week, 50 weeks a year, eight hours a day. Your mileage can vary, absolutely no problem. Yep, and we'll probably be running about five minutes over because we're close. Pat, Patty is now telling me that we have to get started. And Patty, can you put into the uh, chat on this the link for the Teams meeting? Because in about five minutes or so, we're going to switch over to that to have some conversation. So what's adjusted? The adjustment is, is that it's not necessarily 100% loss. Okay, and what I mean by that is how down are you and I'm going to tweak this a little bit that makes this a little clearer, is that you basically make say something along the lines of, well, we're actually 10% productive. We're not completely down. We can still muddle through until we get stuff fixed. In which case, you could basically say that we've got 90%. So instead of being $1,500 per hour downtime, it's $1,350. So you can look for ways 
not to mitigate the risk, but to mitigate the impact by already saying, we're going to have a manual process. We put in the manual process. We'll be able to work about 20% efficient, in which case you're only going to lose 80%. Now, that's still a loss, but that gives you some incentive to try to fix or try to deal with those things. And that way, if somebody basically says, oh, we're not, if we're completely down, but we're not completely down. People can be doing, you know, we're going to put the people out on the shop floor. They're going to do inventory. They're going to do cleanup work. They're going to do, that's great. It's not going to be 100% what they normally do because otherwise they'd be doing that. So what we do, what we've got here, and again, send us an email. We'll, we'll send you this. We'll send this to you. Is this is a, a, a thing that kind of takes what Datto did, removes the tech component because that's what they're doing right there. And they'll be, They'll essentially then, um, or, or you'll be able to then take a look at this and sit down with your group, with your organization, and you'll be able to say, what if this fails? What if this fails? What if this fails? What if this fails? Neil, that's a good point. Return to operation or return to normal. And as you'll see, this is what we call our multi-IT tool. Uh, we've actually got one to talk about training opportunities, IT categories, uh, people, things, cyber risk. We've put we've put it um, we put a whole bunch of different worksheets together, to, basically along these same lines, to try to help organizations just come up with very very simple ways to put things down so that it's here's what we need to work on or here's what our standards are. Okay. Any questions on that? Cool. I hate to say it, but we're pretty much near done. So what do you need to do? You email out the address. There's an address at the end of this. And we'll also be talking about this at the uh, in the Teams meeting. And we'll send you the we'll send you the uh, the worksheet. So we talked about what is risk. We talked about business continuity versus disaster recovery. And we talked about a simplified approach to calculating downtime. Now the thing is, now you start doing it. Now you actually go in and you have a conversation with your organization, with the leadership behind your organization. And if, if you're going to lead this charge, if you want to put it together and just say, hey, this is what I was thinking. And just start with this and don't don't overanalyze it unless there's value to that overanalysis. And then you just say, here's what we're going to use for downtime. And if somebody says, I don't think that's accurate. OK, what should we do? Because if somebody wants to build a, a, a more accurate number, hey, that's great. But without it, this is a great starting point. The related videos, a uh, couple we've got is understanding your cybersecurity risk. And it really, this is about risk analysis. So this is just as useful uh, for just general risk questions such as this. Um, and then we did another one. This is That one's about a 30 minute, 45 minute uh, conversation. The single points of failure is about a two minute video where we talk about the importance of, of identifying and, and managing uh, single points of failure. Now we sort of get into the into the uh, we want to build a relationship. So dealing with business continuity, disaster recovery, you want a partnership. I'm going to go through this real fast because I it, I hate I hate sales pitches. We would love to sit down and talk with you, whether you are the CEO or the internal IT for your organization, and just we can review the worksheet with you. We can talk about the best ways to come up with some of these design with some of these definitions. And we can actually talk to you about strategies, whether you work with us or not, because quite honestly, this 30 minute meeting, this is our opportunity to prove to you that we're here to help and that we're not here to sell you stuff immediately and all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, so we'll give you the, the risk of downtime. We'll give you the templates and I'll give you one of my books. And honestly, if you ask politely or even just ask, I'll give you two of them at least. Uh, CEO Survival Guide to IT. I got to keep, I keep on wanting to do this and it's not the same. Uh, and or I don't want your job as co-managed IT services the right fit for you. Uh, happy to give you either and or both just to put up with me for 30 minutes because nobody deserves that. And at the, at the end of that meeting, then we'll talk about what kind of role we can have with you. We'll talk about our pure MSP uh, concept, which is where we are the internal IT for the organization, and our commits, where we are partnering with the internal IT concepts. And if it's a good fit, we'll explore it further. And if it's not, 
You keep the books. To book the consultation, email me, simplex-it.com. I'm the owner and CEO. I'm the one who creates most of the hassles that Kevin has to deal with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my guarantee is uh, there's no sales pitch to the end, and you've already heard what it's going to be. And only there will only be a sales pitch if it makes sense. And uh, if it's not useful, I'll donate 50 bucks to charity. So talk about the books, talk about pure co-managed. We would love some feedback on this. Absolutely love some feedback. Uh, and with that, <laughs>